Hi, I'm John Salt, uh, founder and president of Multisport Canada. Yeah, Kevin, next year uh, we really are going to try to focus much more on introducing more people to the sport. We know that uh, the athletes that participate in our races, they understand about the camaraderie within the sport, but there's a lot of people out there still haven't uh, found out that the sport can be just a great, fun day uh, with family and friends. Well, we're going we're gonna to add some different categories, so we're now going to have a swim-run category. We've, we've had a bike-run category for a number of years and a swim-bike, but one of the barriers to entry is, has been the, the cost of the equipment. So the bike's always been a big issue. So we thought, well, you know, let's get the swim-run and we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to introduce a women's-only event on Toronto Island. We think it's, we've had a race there for about 10 years now. So to have a women's only event in that venue is going to be pheno phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, we're, we're going to uh, try to get more people to do more racing with us. We're going to have huge discounts for people who do multiple races. Um, as well as uh, finishers medals for everybody. We've, we've decided that that's a, something that's happening in the world of mass participation sport. So we figure we might as well join that, uh, join that group. Well, exactly, Kevin. The, the reality is that in our series, and we know this to be the case uh, in other series as well, that 78% of the participants in, a, in any given year only do one event. So are they truly triathletes? Are they people who are enjoying the sport and the livelihood of the sport? Uh, yes, some of them would be, and they're probably doing Ironman races, and, and they do a, a, the odd regional local race to supplement their training. But the vast majority are sort of one and done, or I'm at the cottage, whatever the case might be. And we feel that uh, maybe if we can incense some of those people who've tasted it and they're not quite sure, maybe a discount's going to help them come and do two, three, or more races. If, if I had the answer to the question of how do you break people out of the mindset of I've got to train uh, long on every weekend because I'm getting ready for a 70.3 or an Ironman or an Iron Distance event, uh, our world would be completely different. The, the reality is that uh, you know, our data and, and just in talking to coaches and athletes themselves, more and more athletes who are training for those longer distance are forgoing the experience of racing. And when we used to train for Ironman and Iron Distance events, racing was part of the whole experience, and it, it helped you get ready. You, you needed to be in the water and, and, and bump up against people, and you needed to understand what it was like in a race situation to maybe go a little bit harder. Um, that's not happening anymore. And I think in part uh, that's because the Ironman brand has done a phenomenal job of creating this experiential uh, uh, event around their brand. So more and more people are saying, I'm going to go and I'm going to do an Ironman. And they do one of those, maybe two, but they're not Ironman or they're not triathletes after that. They leave the sport. So we're hoping that we can get more people to experience what a regional quality event is like. And they realize this, this can just be fun. Exactly, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going out, uh, participating in a sprint or an Olympic distance race. You finish the, cross the finish line, go grab your bike and go and do your three hour ride. You don't have to do a brick the traditional way. Okay, I'm going to get on the bike and I ride for four or five hours and then I'm going to get off all by myself and run for two. No, come out, do an Olympic, race for two and a half hours, then get on your bike for three hours. That's a real testament to your strength. Yeah, it's interesting. We did announce uh, our partnership with Rev3. Uh, what's interesting to me is the first thing that, uh, one of the first reactions was, oh, you, you've sold out to, to Rev3. And, and the reality is, no, we haven't sold out to anybody. Multisport Canada owns that event. We will continue to do that and produce the event. What we saw with Rev3 was two things. One, they have a tremendous reputation in the industry as, as putting on great events with a great atmosphere. And that fits exactly with our mantra. That's exactly what we've done for the past 15 years. The other thing is, is that Barrelman's become a very successful event. With 800 participants last year, that is the largest non-70.3 Ironman branded race in North America. But of the 800 people, 757 were Canadians. 
forty three of those people were from the states and we knew we had to make some inroads in the united states to get that race to what i believe should be a thousand to twelve hundred person race so it was again a natural fit when uh, eric uh, got in touch with me from rev three said you know cedar point unfortunately is not going to be there next year we would really like uh, niagara falls as a destination race to be part of the rev three family it was a no-brainer for me and in fact uh... we had uh, Ten people from the United States registered the day before the announcement, and in the uh, uh, subsequent 10 days, we had 90 U.S.-based athletes register for Barrowman. So we're excited. I think we're going to see 1,000 people there this year.